Have you ever looked up at the night sky and stared in amazement at the mind-boggling complexity of this limitless universe that we live in? Millions of galaxies, billions of stars. Makes you think, doesn't it? Which is, of course, something you're very good at. Because sitting on your shoulders right now is the most complicated object in the known universe. I'm talking, of course, about your brain. Even though it weighs only about three pounds, it nonetheless contains an astonishing 100,000 miles of blood vessels, enough to cross the United States 33 times. And in that brain of yours, there are over 86 billion neurons sending signals to one another at the speed of a bullet train. And the 70,000 thoughts that your brain has each day uses enough energy to power a light bulb. The human brain is truly limitless. When it works well, it's a miracle of creativity and potential. Except that sometimes it goes wrong. So it's a good thing that here at Weitzman, some of the biggest brains on this very small planet are working tirelessly to find answers to the causes of many of the diseases of the brain. Their research is at the technological cutting edge of neuroscience, and through their curiosity, we are gaining an ever greater understanding of what's really going on between our ears. Recently, there was some headlines because both Hawking and Jobs were warning the world uh, that in their view, artificial intelligence uh, was the greatest danger for humanity that could not be further from the truth. We're nowhere near a level of understanding that will allow us to generate a device that would be close to emulating brain function in a way that would, would uh, provide risk. You could liken our current state of understanding of the brain to perhaps the state that uh, Columbus was at when he set sail. On one hand, we really know a lot. On the other hand, it is so complex uh, that we're nowhere near solving it. We can transplant heart, kidney, lungs. We will never be able to transplant brain. This is the last frontier. This is probably the organ we know the least about. It controls everything, it controls our life, it controls our health. It's, it's the most complicated computer that exists. What we're trying to understand is really what it means to be human, what it means to think, what it means to remember, to have a memory what it means to forget. So if we think about uh, autism, schizophrenia, Lugary. depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's disease. These are diseases which involve social functions, cognitive functions, emotional functions, and the set of regions in the brain which control these functions are the regions that we're interested in. Our department has 17, 18 different groups that span the levels of neuroscience investigation. You have the neurochemists, the electrophysiologists, the cognitive scientists. What is very unique here at the Weizmann Institute is we have been able to grab all these individuals looking at the brain in so different ways and making them working together on trying to solve the riddle of how we understand what needs to be understood. Our group is focused on understanding the mechanism by which the brain is controlling our responses to stress. The problem is when this response is not properly regulated when it's not properly turned off. Social behavior is actually essential to the survival of all animal species, including human. Surprisingly, we know very little about the mechanisms that regulate them. Every system of the brain that is malfunctioning, manipulating the immune system can help this pathology. In terms of Alzheimer's, we almost completely abrogate the disease in animal. Therefore, we strongly believe that when we can identify specific genes and protein in the brain, we can use them in order to eventually develop a better way to, to treat this patient. We know from diseases like Parkinson's diseases that the optogenetic tools give us a much more refined way of stimulating neurons and that might bring us closer to understanding the disorder and maybe treating it. Social disorders like the autism are regulated as far as we know by many genes but also the environment has a factor. If we find some of the factor we can maybe get a little bit more knowledge about how can we treat this disorder. We're really excited now about forming what is going to be the Israeli Center for Brain Imaging and Stimulation. This will be a national center, but it'll be located here at Weizmann Institute. And we're all kind of brought together under one uh, roof or hub uh, 
to integrate our understandings into cohesive understanding of the brain. Other places in the world that try to establish brain research centers have the same idea. The difference is that we already have the infrastructure to allow us to do it, to do it efficiently. This is the future, this is where we need to go. Philanthropy, at its best, is the tool, is the environment that allows science to explore new terrains without limits. It's a partnership. At the end of the day, the mechanisms we study are the mechanisms that allow you to understand what I'm saying now. In this way, we're, we're trying to really understand uh, the essence of existence. It's, it, it boils down to that.